Hey everybody, welcome to Crafty Kiera. Today we're going to be talking about making acrylic pour jewelry. In this episode we're going to be talking about making pendants specifically. And those are going to be ones that include a capuchon and a bezel, or a bezel and using resin. There's a couple ways you can go about doing this. One of the ways is using acrylic skins, and that's an example of one here. It's very thin, it's fragile, you want to be careful that you don't rip it or tear it. It depends thickness-wise on how much that you had pulled up. Um, if you are an acrylic pour artist, you know, you'll have your runoff off of your canvas. Sometimes it's thicker in some areas, sometimes it's thinner. Uh, this is an example of one that's not too bad. It's not really too thick or thin. It's flexible still, so it's nice to work with. If you don't have any acrylic pour skins, you can also use an existing canvas. Like in this case, this was an example canvas done by my mother-in-law. She does different techniques and tries different stuff. And sometimes she just doesn't like how it comes out. So this gives me an opportunity to make jewelry out of it. All right, so if we're gonna do the paint skin method, here I have an example of one of the options that you could do. And that is you can go ahead and glue a cabochon onto the paint skin itself. That's probably the most common method that you've seen people do. Um, it's probably the easiest if you just have a skin laying around and you want to use it. So let me just cut this off so it's not weighing down my work here. So what I like to do is take it, make sure it's all nice and clean, that there's no, no debris or anything on it. Wipe it off because you don't want to have like fingerprints or dust or anything underneath. And you want to try to make sure that there's no imperfections. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little better of what I'm doing. Okay. So you can see there's some metallics going through this particular one, some waves. It's got a nice swirl over here. And this is the front side, the back. Looks a little bit more muted, so it's not as sparkly. So we're gonna take, I take the cabochon and I just kind of run it over and see what pops out because it's going to make the image pop out more. So you're gonna wanna Kind of look and go, okay, so I like it there. I like that. The swirl is pretty nice on that. And you're going to want to get your glue. Now I use E6000. I can't really tell that here because I use it a lot. You can get different ones too. Make sure that you get the clear because there is a white version too. And I think there's an, even another different type. Um, you can see I use this a lot. So all you're going to do is you're just going to put a little bit of glue in the spot that you want. All right, now let's put that down. There we go. So you want to push it down. And you can kind of tell if you look along the edges, if it's pushing out. So like, for example, on this one here, I had a bunch of glue push out on this side because I had a little bit too much under there, but you want to push it out because you want to make sure that this is as flat as possible. Because if you have any air bubbles or any like folded up paint for some reason or, or anything, it's gonna, you know, make your cabochon lay crooked in the bezel. So here I'm just pushing down. You want to push down evenly. So you take your fingers and push down and just move it. And there you go. So again, you want to set this aside for about 24 hours and let it dry. So after that time has passed, you have this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. Now, you don't want to cut like really severely underneath. Like I do like a little pass by at first. Just go around gently and make sure your scissors are nice and sharp and just kind of go around the circle. Don't pull at the at this. Don't grab it and pull it because you think you're at the last bit because it'll detach from the cabochon. And that's the last thing you want to do if you spend all this time letting it dry and, and, and get ready. So you, I just do a basic go around. There's still a few little spots here and there and that's when I come and do some trimming. Some people use cuticle scissors for this. I find that's actually harder for me to grip um, and get, you know, in there closely. So this one here, it's got some nice goldness to it with the, the uh, metallics that was used. I, I like to just kind of drop it in and make sure it fits in there right. And that looks good. You want to determine how you want your placement. You can do this now and have an idea like, okay, that looks good. Or you can do it after you put the glue. I put the glue in the tray. And I just put a dot in there. Kind of spread it around with the tip of the 
glue. Oops. See, I'm getting messier. You don't want any on the edge of the tray. Just wipe that off real quick. This stuff, it bonds, but it's not like instantaneous bonding. All right, and then we've got this here, and I kind of like having the gold up towards the top there. So I'm going to just place it in, and you're going to press evenly. Now you see there's some glue coming out on the side here. You want to wipe that up right away. I usually use my finger. As you can see, that came out pretty nicely, and it's got its bail, so it's good to go. All you gotta do, again, I would say, let it dry 24 hours. All right, so let's say you have a piece of canvas. I had this canvas here, and I glued on a cabochon. Again, you would do the same thing. You would take your cabochon, and you would figure out where you wanna put it, and then you'd put the glue on and let it dry. Let's see. That looks pretty cool, actually. All right, so what I would do is put some glue on there, And then you're gonna push down. I like having the canvas on the frame still. You can remove it if you want, but I kind of like the tension it provides. Because you want to get out all the air bubbles, and you, but you don't want like, I don't know if you can see on the edge here. Probably not. It's not quite getting the, the glueiness out of, if you want to call it that. There we go. So you want to press down until everything's even. So now I have that. It's glued down. You do see glue coming around the edges, and that's fine because you're going to let this dry, and then you're going to cut it out. So here's a piece that I had taken off of that canvas itself, and it's been dry for well over 24 hours. Now the thing with canvas is it's thicker than your paint, but also it could harbor air bubbles. I don't know if you can see right there, those little dots, those are air bubbles. And that's caused by the air coming up through the canvas when you had glued, and it's coming to the surface. So even though you're trying to get as many as you can out when you do the pressing process and you move it around, it's still possible for you to get air bubbles. So you have to determine, is that going to be a deal breaker on what I'm making? Are the air bubbles detrimental? Do they add something to it? In this case, it's probably not really a big deal. So you want to cut around. Now with canvas, there is a possibility of overcutting. So you see, that's nice and circular there. There have been times though, where, like I'm say that I wanna cut that little piece there. If you go too far under like this, you're gonna to cut too much off. So you wanna to try to stay right on the circular, circular part. I can't even talk. So now you have your canvas backed cabochon. So same thing with this, with the canvas. You want to make sure, don't put too much glue this time though. <laughs> Just put a little dollop. And then I like that, so we're going to push that down. And the pushing down is helping spread the glue out. And you don't want too little because you don't want this to come apart. Alright, so there you have the canvas. Now you can't really tell unless you tell somebody whether it's a canvas one or if it's a paint skin, because it's not going to be obvious to, if you're going to make these as gifts or if you're going to sell them online, it's not going to be that obvious which one is which. The main thing is you want to make sure that you have a decent image in there and that it's going to hold together. All right, so something you can do with acry acrylic paint pour skins, which is pretty cool, is you can actually punch out the the shape that you need. And I have a bunch of different punches here, or a bunch of ones that were punched out. And this is probably the easiest way to make these, and you can also do this to do your resin method as well. So if you don't want to do cabochons, but you want to make sure your circle's right, I don't recommend like putting a cabochon down and then taking a pin and going around. That's not highly recommended because that's hard to do, and then you've got to make sure you don't wobble when you're cutting, and that gets a little more complicated. So, if you have the option, get a hole punch like this. Let me back up a little bit. You want to get a hole punch. And this is just one of your regular scrapbooking hole punches. This one's a one inch one, which matches up with the 25 millimeter ones that you're going to use for the standard size cabochon. And it has like the little, you know, thing to hold the punch once you punch it out. I usually have it out so that way it pops right out for me. 
And what's cool is you can look at what you're going to be punching out here, so that way you punch out the design you're looking for. So for example, on this one here, I can put this in, and you got a decent enough gap, so it doesn't have to be like super thin. But I'm just going to line it up here, and I'm going to find, like that looks pretty good. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So like that design looks pretty good in there. So then you just punch, and ta-da! You have what you need for your cabochon. Now it is a hair bigger than the actual bezel tray. So you're gonna have to put it in and like push along the sides to make sure that you have it in place. But that's fine. You know, you don't want to trim it because then you'll end up with some different, um, you might end up with a sharp angle, you might end up where you could see the tray. Now let me show you another one here. All right, so you have your bezel. You're just gonna put a little bit of glue and then just kind of spread it around. You're not going to be able to spread around with the skin because you end up ripping the skin. And you don't want to do that. This is where you're going to line up your design. So I think that'll look pretty good. You're going to lay it in there. Start pressing from the center. And spread the glue out. Once you get from the center out, you can start doing the edges. Because you want the glue to flow out to the edges. All right, since these are slightly bigger than your cabbage, and than the tray, I should say, you want to do a little bit more of a press down to get everything nice and flat. And I use my little stick for this. If you have nails, you can do it too. Don't run across the edge. Don't like scrape it. Just go and press it because you don't want to accidentally rip the paint skin and then you'll have a, a little gap in your pendant there. You want to go around and take a look, make sure, and then feel it. Feel if it feels really bumpy in a certain area or if there might be glue traps somewhere. Wipe off any glue that might have gotten on the bezel. All right, so that's going to look pretty good. Here's the other one I had started on with the camera shut off, so now I have two to show you here. Pretty nice designs on those. So I'm going to put these aside for later. What we'll do here is we're going to put the cabochon on. Let me just put a tiny bit on there. Don't go crazy. So this is pretty straightforward. Just drop it on there. You can see, let me go and get this one going too. I'm gonna press down evenly. You want to see that glue bubble basically spread out. So that's that. That one's all spread out. And then this one, remember, press evenly. You're going to spread that one out too. So if you have any glue that came out, you want to wipe that off the bezel right away so it doesn't stick there. If for some reason you come back later and you see it's on there, you can just, you know, take like a toothpick or something and just kind of go along and scrape it off. But don't pull it. So here's this one. And let's see if we can get where you can see the metallics there somewhat. The next method I want to show you is using resin to make your pendants. So it includes the bezel and just the paint skin and resin coating on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a two-part resin. So you're going to need a mixing cup and it's pretty straightforward. You take the two components that are inside here and you mix equal parts. Now you don't need a whole bunch of this because you're only doing a few things. So you're going to need your resin, you're going to need your mixing cup, you're going to need something to mix with. So I usually use one of my little sticks. And in the case of these pendants, you're going to want to use something to keep them level. Because otherwise the resin is going to run a little bit off to the side. Because the, the bale, the bale, I can't even talk, the bale is going to push it up slightly. I like to use my little chalk box here to lay the bezels so that way the ends the bale end stays off, so that way it's completely flat. You may have a little box laying around the house, something else that you can use. So you have your skins there. I go ahead and get this prepped ahead of time, that way everybody's, you know, there. So what you'll do in this case is you'll glue down the skins, which will do that. And then you're going to mix 
your resins. Okay, so now I have my bezel trays with the acrylic pore skins glued in. They are ready to go. Make sure they've dried and they've had plenty of time to adhere properly. So now I'm going to make my little resin mixture. I don't need to make a bunch because I'm only doing four and you're not pouring a ton in here. These are really, really thin. So you only just need a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to use my stick to help get the resin into the trays. And that way you control how much goes in there. You don't want to just pour because then sometimes it just takes off and then you get like a huge amount all over the place. So you want to do this where you control how much goes in there. So it's going to try to spread on its own, of course, but you don't want to get too crazy. So you just do one at a time and just let the resin kind of flow around. Kind of spread it. Don't gouge the paint underneath. So don't just be like scraping it on there. Just lightly move it around. You can always add a little bit more resin to make it fill in 100%. But you want to start, you know, with just a little bit. Don't go crazy. Let's get it along the side there. I hold the, the bale to help prevent me from pushing it around or pushing it off the uh, <laughs> my little box here. All right, so let's do that. Okay, and then you want to tap. And then you can look at it and see if it's filled in. It looks pretty good. The reason why I use a small box is I can just turn this. Don't have to lift anything. You always want to do what's, what's easy and efficient when you're working on your craft projects. All right, so let me spread this one out here. And as you can see, like it's enhancing the colors on here. Like you see, I haven't spread it out. It's like, boom, nice and blue right there. So the resin will help show more of the detail of what you have in your pour. So don't touch them. Don't breathe on them. Don't do anything like that. Because <laughs> you don't want to have any fingerprints. You don't want any dust in these things while they're settling. So you actually could put a container over it if you want. All right. So these are the resin ones that we've made. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see them, hopefully. See the details on them. I think they came out really nice. They've got the gold flecks here and there. It's got the nice blues and whites. Very oceany. So I think those will go good. Okay, It's been 24 hours, and I wanted to show you how these have come out. They look pretty good. I don't see any divots or dust or anything affecting the surface. It has a nice like reflectiveness to it and it's nice and flat. You don't see anything on the edges here. And then like I'm avoiding touching it right now because I want to definitely make sure that it is completely set even though it has been 24 hours because you know with the humidity in Florida you never know. <laughs> so I'm going to let these continue to dry but they are definitely looking really nice and these are going to go up in my store at crafty care shop on etsy i also have all the links for the different products that i used in this video i do have an amazon associates account so it is an affiliate link um, so i would appreciate it if you click on those and and get the products you need if you liked what you saw in the video please like and subscribe to us on youtube here you can also follow us on social media you can also follow us and check out our blog at craftykiera.com. And of course, you can go check out our shop on Etsy for Crafty Kiera Shop. That's all for today, and I'll see you at the next video.